little slow. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the program. One of the biggest goats there is in snowboarding. I just watched all 20 video parts that he's filmed. He's actually filmed more than that, but from standard until now, roughly around 20 video parts. And I can say without a doubt, John Jackson is one of the best snowboarders to have ever ridden a snowboard. Yeah, without a doubt. If you combine all of his video parts and then put all of his highlight reel together into a five-minute highlight reel, which I don't think you could do, it would definitely have to be a 10-minute highlight, 20-minute maybe. And this dude is berserkers. Berserkers? I've never said that before. He's crazy. He's sick. He rides it all. He's not, like, really excelling on the backcountry cheese wedges and then kind of tames it down when he's riding lines and shoots and step-downs, like... The dude gets into the nitty gritty lines that like, you're like, whoa, how are you even traversing into that? As well as the most savage pillows, cheese wedges, natty stuff. And the guy used to jib too. He had a sick back lip. He has a switch 50-50 in white balance. He used a really epic song, She's a Study. If you remember that part, which a lot of you guys I know do, because that was definitely, I think, his breakout part, which put him on the map. I think so, anyway. The white dragon goggles that were sagged with the green, you know, what was he, a green jacket with the fur hood. Planet Earth he used to ride for in Grenade. Like everybody who used to ride at Mammoth all the time. Damn. Really good looks. I feel like it's almost a waste of my time to explain why John Jay is a total goat. I mean, if you don't know who John Jackson is, it's like, whoa. I'm happy that you're tuning in. I really am. And I'm glad that you're getting informed. Therefore, you can have an opinion the next time you're with a group of friends who know stuff about snowboarding. You know, if you're listening to this podcast, yeah, you could actually maybe validate yourself by being like, yeah, I was tuning into the Airtime podcast. I know that John Jackson is a total goat because Jody said so. Well, it's true, but it's based way more than it's deeply rooted, man. You know, this guy has paid his dues. Blown knees, back-to-back season, like comes off form, gets signed by Burton, pretty sure he probably got a huge raise with that one, blew his knee, blew his knee again, boom, over, then he's got to get his mind right, then he gets his mind right, and then he gets back in the game, and then he continues to film mind-blowing stuff. I've had a few days over the last few years filming with John for a few different man boy projects and um, one of his Red Bull shows and watching this guy ride live is crazy. You just don't get to see that kind of talent in front of your f- little Ukrainian face very often. You know, it's like, whoa, I was just blown away, like half cab off the cliff to back three. Oof. You know, I've seen a lot of talent out there. You know, over the years, you kind of see everybody out there and you see, you know, people. But, you know, you don't see that John Jay talent. That is a rarity. It's the big, big boy pants meets the goat, meets the style, meets the OG, meets the, like, I used to listen to his song, She's a Study, that one we were just talking about. Like, that was in my mini disc player when I was riding laps at Spring Hill Winter Park with, like, Jake Kuzik and Andrew Jeeves when we were children. And not only was I listening to that song on repeat, I literally went out and bought that entire outfit. They didn't sell Planet Earth in Winnipeg, so I went out and bought some four-square pants, khaki, obviously, if you've seen the part, and a West Beach green jacket. And my friend, he had a fur hood, and John Jay had a fur on his hood, man, so I needed that fur. And my homie's like, okay, you can have the fur because it's a detached fur hood. So he gave me the fur from around his hood, and I stapled it to my West Beach jacket so it would look like the Planet Earth jacket that John was riding in, white balance. And there I was in the middle of Winnipeg, the biggest biter of John Jay. And I don't regret it for a minute. That's how you get, that's how you get the vision, man. You, you find the people that you look up to. And you sprinkle a little John Jay in and MFM and a little Danny and Simone Chamberlain. No, I'm, just, I'm going on my list that I looked up to, you know, a little Daryl Mathis. You know, and then you sprinkle all those people together and then before you know it, yeah, you're a biter, but you got your own shit. 
There's no way you're gonna look exactly like somebody else. And I mean, in those early days, it's kind of it's kind of tight, to fucking bite. I think so. Anyway, maybe not. Maybe I mean, do your own thing if you don't need to bite. But where I was at in my life, dude, I needed some direction, dude. I was lost. Kid from Oak Bank, Manitoba. Bro, I didn't know what was going on, so I needed people like John to look up to. Men's video part of the year, men's rider of the year, men's jumper of the year, X Games, medals, you know, the whole nine yards, this guy's done it. A black belt, a grandmaster, a guru, whatever you want to call him. I appreciate you coming on the podcast, John. Thank you so much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us for this special preview. And now, our feature presentation. How you doing? Are you going to wear Good, the headphones man. or no? You're not a head... You don't need I don't headphones. think so. You don't need the headphones. No. Well, I can hear you perfect. I, well, there you go. The only reason why you wear them, I think, is just so you can see, like... So when I go, like, it picks that up. And I'm like... But, I mean, like, you clearly away. have good hearing. Because people yeah. who have good hearing are good at balancing, and you seem like you're good at balancing. You know, you're a hell of a jibber. I'm okay. You were okay. a good jibber. You know, I slid some metal this year. What? Yeah, first run through the park. Like, it was so fun, actually. You actually did? Yeah, yeah. Just well, like a quick little couple of board slides, but they went smooth. Are... Yeah, super sharp edges, too. No, you don't detune, eh? Mm-mm. Do you sharpen? Do you keep those things like... I mean, I pretty much just run it out of the box, and then, uh, you know, they eventually detune themselves. Oh, nice. You go natural detune. Yeah. <laughs> See, I get anxiety riding around with tuned edges. Like I always, like if I go off like an icy park jump and I have brand new edges in my own head, I'm like, I'm going to catch when I spin switch backside or something like that. So I like have to do the detune, <laughs> but you know, you're the vet here. So clearly you don't need to do that. Dude, you know, I was just telling somebody, I used to be like so much more sensitive of my setup and like super anal about my stance and having it all perfect like you know <laughs> and and inch and three quarters set back and you know like like exactly the same and now i'm like so just whatever i just like slap it on there <laughs> like i actually like changing it up a lot you know um yeah i'm like we you brought see- two boards out the other day I couldn't, I wasn't even, when I wrecked myself, I wasn't even feeling good. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to hit anything. I like set up a board that I had never ridden, put together the stance all weird, ride it for two laps. And then I'm like, "Mm, I don't know, this feels horrible. (laughs) Like (laughs) set up my other board that I had ridden two days. Like, okay, feeling good about it. Um, And, uh, and then I freaking wrecked myself <laughs> doesn't that just prove your whole theory but, wrong like don't you want to be setting up your board so there's consistency <laughs> you know i have i have like i don't think it was it was the board's fault at all i was feeling great you never blame the board on no it's the user i mean some it, certain certain circumstances but like i used to be such a creature of habit riding one setup i you know one size park whatever and uh and like have the exact same tool and now I love to mix it up. Like it's been really fun to to be riding different things. I mean, I haven't had a board sponsor for like you know almost three years, two years, and uh, so I was riding everything. And and I I started I uh, I came up with this idea to start. I kind of like I don't even know if I should mention it because it's not quite started yet. I have like a little Instagram and Facebook and little YouTube channel, but. Um, I'm just starting to build it, but it's called the board meeting and, uh, and I want to basically ride every technology out there and then share that with, with the viewers so they can kind of like get an idea how things perform and in what circumstances and like buy cool boards and build their quiver if they want to. But, um, for me, it's like trying to create fun and funny and whatever cool content, but have it kind of focus on the performance of the product, you know, because you don't really see that much of that. I think that's genius, dude. And <laughs> people are going to want to see that because, I mean, you are pretty much one of the, you know, we can say it easily without a doubt, one of the best backcountry riders to ever oh, exist bro. on earth. I'll say it. I watched all your video parts in a row the other day and you've, you've accomplished a lot. God, that must have been boring. <laughs> you, 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 really, you really did it, you know. You got those strong legs. But now that if you're going to go into this whole, like, you know, analyze all the technologies and then give back your feedback. 
you know, you got to start hitting the metal again. And I'm glad to hear you you're know, back I'm, on the board. I slides. like that. <laughs> I'm so down, actually, dude. With like jibber job. While I'm up here in Whistler, we got to go do do a little lap through some metal. Dude, we were watching all park. your old parts and uh, you were jibbing, you know, the white balance. You got the switch 50s in there. You know, the year, um, the paradox, you even had a few jib clips, I'm sure. Those old standard films, dude, you were out in them streets. Yeah, man, it was it was awesome. The beginning of funny. White Balance, that big back lip you do down that steep bar. Oh, What's do you dude. remember that session? Yeah. Your op- where was that? That was in uh in uh Michigan. What? Yeah. Dang. Oh, are you talking the one in the there's park? Like, yeah, there's a park mm. rail and there's a down rail right yeah, there's yeah. a bar uh, right in the middle stairs on both sides. Um, it's like red. That that was like I think that was Super Park in Colorado. I don't remember. That seems like a super the, park setup, uh, hence there's like a thousand photographers yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. on the it was side. Definitely, I don't remember the resort. Maybe like, I don't know, we'd have to look it up. Yeah, whatever. I'm not the best One with of the, the older history. super parks. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am old as dirt. Yeah, oh, but like, So when did you, so like, let's go back to the beginning. Like when John mm-hmm. was a young buck, how did you get into snowboarding? Did you skate first? You grew up at Mam- in Mammoth Lakes, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Crowley Lakes, just like 12 miles south of Mammoth. Okay. And uh little little tiny nice family community, awesome town. Country living or city? C- country living. Country. Yeah. Living. We had, we had one stop sign. Ooh, nice. In there, yeah. Just one. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> Just, Just one stop sign and a little general store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was nice. And uh yeah, I used to skate. I there was, you know, now Crowley has one of the sickest skate parks, super smooth, mellow, like um uh, I've skated it only a couple times, but back in the day I was, you know, skating Crowley Lake Drive, trying to ollie over broomsticks. And, and like, would <laughs> the other Mammoth Lake dudes be there? Was like Danny Cass and Eddie Wall floating around? Well, now like, people are going and skating the, the Crowley scene. Yeah. But, uh, back then it was just you. But back then, I mean, there was nothing to skate. We'd skate like the tennis courts behind the cop, the police station and Crowley Lake Drive. It was like not even a curb. There was just no spots. It was just you working yeah, you on just flat like ground. Doing some flat ground, <laughs> <laughs> sliding around. Yeah, uh, but then they started me. Like then they built uh, Shady Rest. I don't know, a long time ago, and uh, that was that was kind of the spot. I mean, but actually, even before then, it was like Storm Riders, the little the little shred shop. Storm Riders I don't back think I've ever in the day. Them. Oh, dude, they are legit. They were core. Were they still going or they're down? No, they're, they're no longer. But um, I think I still have like a classic Storm Rider sticker. Was like that your first shop sponsor? No, Wave Rave was. I used to work at Wave Rave for like three that's years. That's still around? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's still, Steve Clausen owns that. Yeah. Awesome dude. The place is uh, like one of the more core shops out there. Yeah, yeah, I've been there a few times. Good spot. They have a skate park in the back. The, the gravel around there is pretty rough in Mammoth, though. Like, if you're not yeah. at the skate park, whew. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, now now <laughs> it's kind of a skate mecca. It's like, you got the Brothers Park, you got Shady Rest, old school, you got Wave Rave still doing it, you got Crowley, and then you got Crowley Lake Drive, broomsticks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you grew up skating, and then you transitioned like everybody, pretty much, who's been on this podcast so far. Into snowboard. When did you grab your first stick? What was your first board? Uh, Burton Free Three, like the one with the clouds on it. I don't remember that one. It was a, I think a one thirty two or something, one thirty two or one thirty four, a little bit too big for me. Um, my sister and I shared it. We'd kind of trade off, but how was that annoying? Yeah, that sounds like it would get agitating. Yeah, especially if you slowly got addicted to it, you'd be like, "Can I have that board again?" Oh, dude, <laughs> I used to be just like. Oh man, I I was so addicted to snowboards. I can I can totally relate to like all the snowboard nerds out there cuz I totally am. I'm doing one. a snowboard podcast, so like, you know, clearly <laughs> I was a snowboard Dude, nerd. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I uh and then my second Burton board uh what it was it was again like a Burton Air, the one with the little fly on it. And uh, oh man, I was I was I loved it. I think I slept with it. Yeah, dude, first, I first I've time. done similar things. Yeah, 
close to, you know, that's how, that's how big the stoke is. You're like yeah. laying with your board after you buy it. That's, yeah. that's when, you know, it's like, Oh my, Oh no, this might take over my, if you, if you have a kid and your kid is sleeping with your board, he's doomed. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then, so that, that all unfolds. You keep buying these Burton boards. When did you get your first sponsor? Did you go to, you're just killing it at mammoth, just Dude. little young gun, John out there, just spinning and, Flipping, just doing it for the love, man. Doing it since for the day soul. yeah, one, hiking, eh? hiking the pipe, riding the park. Like, I mean, June was the spot to go before Mammoth even had a park. And I mean, I had so many idols I looked up to. Like a lot of good Let's people hear come, about out those. Of, come out of Mammoth. I mean, the Anderson brothers, oh, uh, big Aaron fan. Bishop, uh, you know, Tommy Shasheen, Chris Nelson, Dave Downey. Oh yeah, like. Uh, Oh man, there's there's so many Stephen Brown, like the list goes on. Troy, and those are like the hometown boys. Yeah, wow, that was your. That's insane to hear, like your crew and your surrounding, and like the people that like shaped you at that young age, compared to like where I grew up in the middle of nowhere. And it really goes to show if you're surrounded by like the biggest mecca of progression, how quickly like, I, dude, your first video parts that I saw anyway, you're probably around like 15 years old and you were already like filming legit shit. And that just goes to show that when you're around all these dudes riding the pipe, riding all these jumps and doing like all of the tricks, switch back side spins and pipe air to fakies and you were sick at pipe too. That's, that's one. That's you were really, a really well-rounded oh, rider back then. Just getting it by all these mad pros. Just the inspiration man. level must have been huge there. Yeah, man. I looked up to a lot of people, and I just, I was so addicted. I rode, I rode nonstop. I just, I was, you know, there as early as Ma would drop me off, and then stay until the bell rang. And uh, yeah, my, I think my first little hookup was a. Uh, was uh fresh jive fresh jive you remember that company i yeah. do yeah 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 they had like the the like sexy women in their ads little little you know it was before my time ads. but i've heard the names yeah yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> what i mean been... like it's it's <laughs> not like it's like bringing like a clear bell in my head but i've heard the name in snowboarding well so the dude that got me into the game kurt wastel damn like hiking legend. the pipe and he was like yo what what's your name i and he was shooting there and he he like, you know, we had a conversation. I was like, dude, no way, Kurt Wastel, dude, like this is sick. And then and then yeah, he hooked me up with with Fresh Jive and I started getting boxes. And uh and the best that was feeling like, ever. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. It was like I was like, whoa, what it, like you know, because I never I never like thought about it like that. I just loved it so much. It was it was an obsession. I just you know, I never thought that like I wanted anything out of it. You know, it was just like an addiction. And then, and then to start getting these boxes, I was like, "That's kind of cool. Like I'm getting free shit." <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I, uh, yeah, and then I don't know what age I was, but so you my, were just hanging with them. You didn't even have to do the whole like make a DVD and stuff. You just bumped into a legend at that time. Yeah. Kurt was like an established pro. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. He was board sliding big kink rails and stuff like that and spinning off cliffs. And he's like, yo, I'm going to hook you up with this company. Yeah, you get your insane. first box, you're tripping. Totally. And then um, and then my mom kind of shut it down like a while into it when she started seeing the ads. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> mm, You got like blunt magazines and you're like, you represent this. Yeah. Who, who? I don't even remember what they were. Like inked maybe or like some of those. I don't know. But and that she was just tripping on him, eh? She was like, these yeah, are the devil's uh, freaking uh, magazines. Mm. There's ass, tits, puking, yeah, she wasn't beer, stoked. drinking, drugs, <laughs> cigarettes. But regardless, I got some gear to ride in, and then, and then like, <clears throat> other things started happening. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been on a long career path of different companies and, Dude, and relationships. Huge. And, you know, it's... It's cool. I've learned a lot. Business is all about relationships. Oh yeah. And uh yeah, I just signed with Sims. I know. For yeah. like the second or maybe third time, which is <laughs> That's awesome. amazing, dude. Yeah, I've been They kind of like, like just they they just went like full re-up as of late. You know, they put you Keegan on. I've seen like another homie here with them. They have like 
Tadashi rides with them, correct? Yeah. Like, and Shuhei. Oh, man, the squad is awesome. Dope. Like, so you're happy. You got a little family. It would love it, man. Like, not only the team, but the guys behind the scenes, too, are Teddy Koo. Teddy Koo. Jordan. Um, Teddy um, Koo is a G. Dude, such a G. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, and there's no, there's no like pressure or push. It's all really authentic and genuine, and j- they just are like they want to build. You a guys, family. go, go, do your thing. Like, what do you want to do? You know, put putting it in our hands. And I'm like, wow. Like Sims has had such a huge impact on my life. Um, not only because I've ridden for him, but just because I've looked up to so many of their oh, riders for, sure. for so long. Like the the Slaz, the Noah's Ark was by far like the most envied board for me like i wanted that board so bad i that's, think that's, that's in my, everybody's like that's top my five. favorite yeah and and that like wow dude what a legend so so there's kind of like a little bit of a i'm like wow man we 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 have a sick opportunity here but we also have like a little bit of a responsibility to like well not a responsibility but just like man let's do some sick shit let's carry this torch well and uh and but there's no like it's it's super genuine and I think everybody on the squad um, really like represents their own character well and and like just is super just you know natural and and free flowing and it's gonna be like you know it's gonna be how, something you're hyped to be by. how snowboarding was you know back in the day it was like yeah it wasn't like you tried to make something cool you just you just were you just did what you did and then and then it turned into like something rad i'm psyched for you man i think it's a good look i think like nice. it's a really good look for you and That's judging good. by your smile right now you're genuinely you're excited for this new chapter dude I'm. Stoked, you've had a yeah. lot of chapters though like the book of john jay runs deep <laughs> oh dude it does kind of run deep man i'm, I'm yeah, so when was I'm your first time going fortunate. over like seas and shit? Like when you were a kid, you were riding Mammoth, you were you before Standard, what production company were you filming for again? You were filming for Um so Tori Piro, which uh what, what what was his it was like uh I don't know, the first movie I was in was Hi Fi. Well the first like kind of kind of like real movie. Real snowboard movie. You psyched on your part then? You know, I I was, but I was also like, I, I was, it was so, I got opening part and I, I remember going to the, to the premiere and being like, so embarrassed that I had opening part. <laughs> like my face comes on the screen first and I'm like, kind of like sit low in my seat. I'm like, oh shit. Like I'm right fucking here on the opening. <laughs> and, and it was like a scene of, I don't know. I was like my opening scene was running through like a big pack of sheep. Kind of weird. I guess. It sounds like, like the beginning of like an g- old grenade movie or something like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was totally random. Tori and I were, were down in Bishop and we saw like a bunch of sheep on the side of 395. He's like, ah, you should go run through those. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> little, little did you know, like eight months later, you would, you'd be opening the video to that exact run. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh shit. Yeah, but I guess it's a good thing to get opener and run through sheep. Hey, no. hey, dude, you got opening part for it. Maybe they didn't even like your footage that much. They're just like, the sheep shot, dude. The sheep <laughs> yeah. shot is so fucking yeah. sick, dude. John's getting opening, dude. Yeah. I know, man. It's a good thing I did it. They're just like, yo, dude, if John keeps running through sheep, man, he's going to keep <laughs> opening and ending these movies. <laughs> And that's what you did, dude. Like 20 something years later, you're still opening and ending. Like I, it, I, one thing I really want to stress to all the viewers now is I think that a lot of people that don't, that haven't followed your whole career because they're not as nerdy as I am, obviously I have a podcast and shit, but like, you know, they think of you as John Jay, the guy who films insane GoPro stuff that had stuff in like the Travis movie. But before that, you know, you go through your go with Burton and then you had your both knee injuries. Before that, you're on forum. Before that, you were doing standard films for years. Just, you know, hitting helicopter jumps on Whistler Blackcomb. Whew, that front dude. seven melon you did. Oh, man. That in uh, Paradox, dude. And then before that, time, you go all the way man. to your dude making you run through sheeps, dude. I know. Dude, you've had even, a, you've <laughs> had a career times 10, man. And I have been, been a big fun. fan it's the a whole blessing, time. man. I'm, I'm so stoked. I'm just like, yeah, I'm happy. It's kind of ha- harsh how much power you've ridden. Like, you've rode more power than maybe anybody else oh, in the man, world, dude. So many, so many power face shots. Yeah. At 
Uh, yeah, man. I just, I just am glad the body's still holding up, you know, and, uh, fortunate to still be doing it, man. I love it. I think I love it more than I ever have. Like last year was probably the best year of my life. Oh, that's you know, amazing like to hear. 35 was <laughs> such a sick year. Um, I got to travel all over, see places I never had and, uh, had a great season. And, um, yeah, man, all around, like summer, winter, everything, like such a rad year. They do say that, um, you kind of, uh, you go through transformative experiences every seven years. I believe that's, that. That's right. Big on time. The, like right on the seven year mark. Yeah, dude. And snowboarding to me is, is like the longer I've done it, the more I've had my own peaks and valleys with it. And I mean, it's like a relationship, yo. You're like there's some highs and there's some lows and there's everything in between. But like if you just keep persevering, those highs just get better. You know, it's like a stronger relationship bond, whether it's like with your parents and but then instead of your parents or your girlfriend or your child or whatever you're working at, it's this snowboard thing. And it's like you find these new ways to love it more and more and more. Like I was for me, it was probably last year too, was the first year where I was like, I had some years there where just like in my head and just like thinking of how I want to ride and stuff like that in the future. And now that it last year happened, I'm like more psyched on just snowboarding for me with my own little pathetic vision than like ever. I'm like, I dude, fucking yeah, love where right, my head's dude. At. Wait, let's talk about <laughs> your career for a second. No, dude. not at all. Oh man, dude. <laughs> I, you know, we were just watching the absinthe movie actually this yeah, morning. Yeah. And, uh, the man boys part. Dude, yeah, that dude, like I was opener butter, like, and that was some risky business. Uh, there. The, the, I wish they used the bail. I don't know if they did because the bail clip kind of like emphasizes the. Wait, I was did, happy with that did, clip. Though. Did you Thanks, bail dude. before that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had my first take on it. I did the bail and then went. My nose went into one of those. What are they? Bergstroms? Oh, <laughs> it, it wasn't actually one of those, but it was like a little one, you know. And I so I went at into the hole that word too. and flipped. <laughs> And then, um, and then I went for it again because you know all those years of inspiration by you. I was like, "Fuck, dude! I hope John sees this clip." <laughs> dude, that <laughs> clip was so sick. <laughs> oh uh, man, I did it for you, buddy. Oh, dude! Yeah. Wow, good job. Yeah, I mean that. I, you know what? I don't normally take compliments because I mean, typically I'm like pretty hard on myself because I mean, you know, you watch all those videos for dude, when you've seen as much. Give yourself a pat on the back. I know back, that's bro. what the thing is. La- you last gotta, year, you gotta, gotta love yourself. You gotta love yourself. It ain't it ain't that easy sometimes. It ain't that. You, oh, I get wow. so frustrated, dude. Last year, I think I was more frustrated than I ever have. I never have head butted my board. Like that's a hold new your one. Board up between the bindings and throw it at your face and headbutt it to where it flexes and shoots back. Well, you've done all the was, tossing before, you know, where you throw your board at metal and then this and then punch yeah, yeah. the ground. You've done those. Yeah, yeah. You I've needed done. a new release. <laughs> I, know. I know. Tom, who is shooting, was above it and he's like, "Hey, chill the fuck out." I'm like, You're shut like, the fuck up. This Tom. is twenty I'm years like, of frustration, so bro. Mad. Yeah, oh, but there's no a... reason to ever get that mad. It's really silly. It's no. so stupid. I saw Belzil do it the other day. We were up here hitting. He did the headbutt. Down. No, he didn't do the headbutt. But Belzil's a very mellow dude, and he didn't land a front seven. And I've never seen him get that mad before, dude. Everyone goes through their little pent up fucking moments where they just explode. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Oh yeah. That, that have you, you have you filmed with Sollers? You you were on Burton for a quick minute. Did you yeah. Have a few days with Mark. Yeah. You ever see him not land a clip? Ooh, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. You ever seen Pat Moore not no, land a trick? I've dude. never filmed with Pat. That oh man, I you were on well, film for a while. <laughs> yeah, and I mean Pat's a ginger. He's <laughs> he gets fired up. <laughs> yeah, I can I can imagine. With, yeah, it's kind of it. It's kind of amusing when you see those things happen. I mean, you're like, oh, God. so would Pat like, be in the you, dude? But you've been filming for a long time. Other. Who would be in the mu- the top of getting mad when they don't get their clips? The, like the top, mucho furioso. Would Pat be in the top? Mucho? Pat is pretty mucho. Yeah, <laughs> mucho furioso. I would say like, yeah, he'd. he'd uh, I mean, maybe even not the most furious. He would just throw the most spectacular tantrums. Those are dope. Yeah, that's what I do, and I, I'm really glad that they don't, they don't emphasize those in the movies that I'm in because I if I don't land, I get really mad, <laughs> <laughs> dude. It, it's it was, it it's special, dude. But especially I know because when you're coming around, nobody nobody on like you know 
again, it's, it's just a silly thing we're doing. We're fucking sliding down a mountain on a piece of wood, like trying to land tricks and, <laughs> and like filming, you know, it's like, but to us, it's so important. It's like such a, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's a self challenge. It's something that you know you can do. And when you can't do something that you want so bad or that you feel like you should be able to do, sometimes you even feel entitled to yes. that. And, and it's ridiculous. You got to remember that you're just having fun out there and what we're doing is kind of silly but oh yeah it's, it's just, super it's goofy just, it's just fun you know but it sucks it's kind of like i think i think about it like you're like drawing on a nice piece of paper but you're drawing with like no background support you know so the paper's in the air and you're drawing this nice picture and it's perfect you know it's your favorite picture you ever and everything's coming together and then you just push a little too hard and then you rip the picture in half and the <laughs> pencil goes through the other side and you're just ruined your picture. <laughs> like you were en route to doing the picture so well, but then you just fucked it up in front of everybody. That's a pretty good you analogy. Yeah. And, and so it's many times I'm coming around on that back tub seven. Hole in the middle of your yeah. picture now. And you're coming That's around on your John Jay switch back five and you got a perfect indie. You're doing everything right. You popped off the take, your speed's good. Oh, there's a weird little bump you didn't see way down there, and it just throws you left and you fall. And it's like you did not deserve to lose that piece of art so quick. Totally. Or maybe you're like, damn it, I shouldn't have gone on that little Tinder date. My no- legs are all noodly now today. <laughs> Those damn Tinder dates, eh? They just noodle out the legs. You know, why do you, why do you get Tinder? I never used Tinder. What, uh, what, kind of, what kind of dating apps do you use? I, really none of them, man. Al, Al Natural. Oh. I have used... I, I, did, I was on Tinder for a second, and I went on two dates. One was up in Terrace, like the most random spot to go on a date. Great place and, for uh, a date. And we went to Mr. Mike's, and uh, the the girl was so shy, incredibly shy. And I was trying to like warm her up, and I was telling her about the Smirnoff Ice Game. What's and, that game? I mean, come on. Oh, the ice game? Like, yeah. were you okay? I can't. I fucking idiot. I should have brought some ice. No, I would be bummed <laughs> if you iced me right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're drinking CBD water. It's we're drinking nice. CBD water, baby. Um, but anyway, so I'm telling her about the game. She doesn't really understand. All of a sudden, the the waiter the server comes over and and like puts an ice right in front of me i'm like what like you just iced me how did you know i was talking about this and so apparently ejac had called in and ordered an ice remote icing to the table yeah it's pretty good move wow but it was ironically right in the perfect position you know when i was telling her about the ice and then like i'm like See, here's how it goes. Got on one knee. She was still like, wasn't very impressed. Did the rest of the date unfold the way you wanted to? Like, did you guys like lock lips, kiss, maybe? Uh, no, no, definitely not. It ended no. after it was you cool. ice. You know, we just kept it platonic. She learned about the ice game. <laughs> <laughs> Drop her off. And, yeah, and that was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She shared a cigarette outside and mm. just went home. Yeah, I was. I had like, we were staying at my buddy's lodge, and I kind of had uh, strict rules not to bring guests in even though i could have you know yeah you, little, he didn't want you to do the noodle legs at his place i mean the noodle legs usually come after the the other stuff yeah it's true it's a later thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's yeah. the you lose your power <laughs> <laughs> she steals my power <laughs> i saw you uh with on an interview with uh pam anderson when you got rider of the year do you remember that i believe that and that dude i watched it twice just and I zoomed in on the face because you can do that on your phone. And I, th- I think she was flirting with you, dude. She did give me a kiss on the cheek. Did you, there you go. I didn't. Uh, yeah. I didn't she really looked high. I mean, she was. I think she was more nervous than I was. Yeah, dude. After, that's exactly how I felt. I was like, not only I was like, oh, dude, John's coming over to my house to do this podcast. He's such a boss. I just watched all of his footage. So I'm going to watch some old interviews of him. I was like, he's probably really insecure around beautiful women. What could I find? So I find this interview with Pam Anderson. I was like, here he goes. Here's his weakness. <laughs> Pam Anderson. Really? No weakness. There just was an you interview. You killing it. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's saying jokes. You even do the light, like, hand crest, like, not too aggressive, but just, like, letting her know that you think she's a babe. Oh, nice. and, and you could see she started tripping out. Like, damn. Like, I was like, oh. He's got it in the bag, but you must have been busy that night because you got routed. There was a lot so. of things going on, and then like I went in the back and blazed up like two splits. <laughs> <laughs> got super baked. Was that John's peak of getting baked around then? Um, when was your peak stonerism? I don't know, man. Yeah, I was. I was quite the stoner back in the day. Maybe like a little, little much. 
Um, but yeah, right around that time, I don't yeah, know nice. what was that. Probably like LRG phase, you know, that was form I mean, LRG. That's the, like Uber baked John phase. The, 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 yeah, the fuck it video, their, their intro, they're like, Hey, we went, yeah, that was a trippy went, intro. Like, you know, smoke, you know, they set it up with all this lighting and they wanted some cool smoke shots. I seriously, oh man, I don't even, I smoked a lot. Like, I got and oh man i don't know if i should say this that video but, part was amazing yeah. and yes you should say whatever you're about to say yeah yeah <laughs> well this is what we need in snowboard podcasts right now mm, is the real stories i mean that have shaped John everybody Jay's has life. them everybody has them some you know first of all i don't i don't condone anything i'm saying to be you know life advice financial yeah. advice <laughs> spiritual advice <laughs> or take everything any, with a giant grain like of salt and um but uh yeah, you know my experience is I want to trade them for the world. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had some some great ones, and uh, oh, I believe yeah, it, dude. So that's my favorite thing, you know about about this this crazy life. Just the wild encounters, you know. You got to take advantage of opportunities. Have some, just like the most random encounters out there that are so magical. They are. You kind of got to put yourself out there a little bit too. And really you put like yourself out there. You go on like trips. You go to the Baja. You're driving vehicles. You're going to. Oh, totally. You go. You go to cool music festivals. You went to that big arts festival. What's it called? That thing looks pretty cool in the desert. Why am I blanking on the name? Burning Sh- Man. Burning Man. <laughs> Burning Man looks. I've never met anyone who's gone to Burning Man, oh, dude, and who's come back come. and been like, "That was a bad time." Even the people who didn't want to go, who went because they were dating somebody who was going, they come back and they're like, "That was the best time ever." So how was yeah, your experience at Burning Man, dude? Did you, did you have a good time? What's it like? I always have a good time, man. It's it's like you, that's that's talk about that's the epicenter of random encounters or like you know everyone. I don't know. It's it's it is um, like a a wild place. I don't know. Do you drop I, the John Jay snowboarder when you're there and you're just John Jay the your yourself? Or what do, do you, mean? you? I don't know. Are you going around talking to people? Like, yeah. So I, when I was in Alaska last year, and I was no, no, you down never talk. Face. You never. <laughs> no, you're just you're just al natural and and cruising around like meeting people and just it's all about love, man. I sound like such a hippie. No, no it's dude. Like I've I've had some I love it. incredible like. I mean, dude. I don't know what year it was, but I was I was skating this. They had this mini ramp like a like a heart it was like a heart bowl and uh and i see this dude on the other side kind of looking at me and i'm like i swear i recognize that dude but i couldn't figure it out and then he comes up and he's like john i'm like yeah who is that he's like david benedict i'm like no (laughs) freaking way (laughs) benedict dude you are my hero what Um, are you doing out here and i think he was just out there by himself like checking it out you know what a g yeah he's such a g and then I had another random encounter with Jamie Lynn. Like, like I, I was looking for uh, Austin Smith, and I go over to his camp. I'm asking around, and nobody nobody knew where he was staying or really, like, knew, and everyone was busy. I'm like, go over behind all their setup, and I see this guy getting in the trunk of his car, and he's, like, digging something out, and it's dark. And I'm like, hey, have you seen Austin Smith? And it's kind of like, uh, like, M- uh, mumbling, mumbling you know, and then and then he pops out. I'm like, you need a light. He pops out. I'm like, holy shit, Jamie! <laughs> and we're like, no way. <laughs> it was, it's so cool, but oh yeah, my yeah, just God, just, that's amazing. You see people in random places, and it's yeah, you're having a good time. I mean, I've only seen Jamie Lynn twice, and both time I've seen him, he has this like aura, this presence to him, where he like almost seems like. I don't know, greater than life. I don't. Is that a weird thing? He has a. Th- we got down from bald face after we did Pat's level one. We got down to the bottom. Jamie's at the bottom, and I'm tripping out because of Jamie Lynn. I'm a big fan, and uh, he's got like his leather jacket on and his this cool fucking pants, and he's got his like sweetheart of a girlfriend, and they're getting ready to go on. He comes up to all of us and like shakes her hand and says what's up, and then he gets on the thing, and I was like, dude, that guy's got like a bigger than life presence, but it, it's not in like a cocky, arrogant way. It's in this like, I don't know, accepting of all things that are happening at that moment and knowing how to like not overanalyze. I don't know. He's got a presence around him that I was drawn to immediately, so I can imagine what it would be like to yeah, bump man. into him at Burning oh, Man. Dude. You'd be like, you were the perfect person to be around. Ed Burns. Yeah, it was so fun. <laughs> we went on a bike ride. We went and cruised around, shot the shit. 
Yeah, that dude is concrete. He's just so solid. That's amazing Bolts. when you meet your shred heroes, not only at Burning Man, but just in everyday life, and then they yeah. exceed your expectations. <laughs> yeah. I'm hyped to see, I I'm hyped to hear that you ran into David Benedict. Just because yeah. I don't know anything about David Benedict, but oddly enough today, Mikey LeBlanc posted like this thing about David Benedict and him watching the Travis Rice movie, Dark Matter. Yeah. And, no and Mikey and him are like tripping out because of how crazy it is. And I was like, yes, like something of David so Benedict. Sick. I haven't seen anything on David in yeah. so long. It's nice to see that he's like still hanging out with Mikey and he's going to Burning Man. And I mean, to hype up Dark Matter, which was insane. What did you think oh, of that man. movie? I loved it. I was I was just telling these guys, I, I feel like that's my favorite thing Travis has put out. That's it, it's so sick. I can't believe, like, you, there's only, we've talked about this before in a group of people that, like, you know, I really respect and ride backcountry, but there's only, like, there's only, like, five guys who really ride, like, in that Travis world, and you are included in that, and it's, like, how to get in and ride the stuff that he rides. I mean, like, literally, I can't even comprehend it. The other day we were riding, and I had one turn to miss, and then that's where I enter into my line. And I fucked that one turn up. And Rasmin <laughs> on the radio was like, yo, yo, you missed your, yo, yo, stop, stop, stop. You missed your entrance. Oh. And I was like, oh, okay. So I had to like hike out. But like Travis has to make like 17 of those down one run. And not only is he carving, he's doing tricks. <laughs> Dude, he's an animal. I mean, yeah, Travis is, is a, a true legend. Like can't toss around that word too too loosely too loosely yeah he's, and obviously he's put out amazing shit you know his whole career well, everything all like the videos the, all the old absinthe movies like all everything all the old videos is, you're in is he's in and he has you have incredible footage but, and so does he but you can see that he ha has like you know his travis thing going on like yeah early he's he's intense yeah, yeah. The intense i mean how's with filming with him like, you've done Quite a few years with him, you know, and I mean, like, is he a fun guy to be around? Is it too intense? Yeah, man, he's awesome. He's 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 intense sometimes. You know, he's he's very focused. He's very like goal driven. Sometimes, even like a little, you're like, ooh, I don't know, I don't know if that's a good idea. Like, cause he can he can push what he wants. Yeah, you know, um, but I mean, that's what that's what makes him so good. It's hard. It's hard not to do that. You know, it's hard to have patience and walk away from something or like, you know, he, he, he's, he's a savage, man. He, uh, he's gonna get it done. He's gonna, he's gonna do what he knows he can do. It seems like he he's the ultimate dude to go ride with. If you want to take your snowboarding to the next level, not because of the train, he's going to give you the access to strictly on the fact that like, he looks like he, like Rasmin was saying, he took the time to like talk to him one on one, analyze his line, and say like what he could do. And he brings this level of like confidence to your own riding. So you pushed like, dude, the video, the footage that you filmed with, like obviously your forum stuff was obviously always like standout. Your ending video, seven minute double song, and fuck it. And then that Travis stuff, even for you, like I was like, holy shit! Like you just took your riding from like the best in like that to just a different level. Like you're back 10 double that you filmed off that like when that shit was happening people weren't doing that stuff nor were people going that big nor were people going that big in alaska like that was an insane <laughs> was, year for snowboarding yeah. when that video came out <laughs> that was an insane trip that was such a magical trip that was such a yeah i was so glad i i did that i wanted to shoot with those guys more but i i, I think i was injured on the second year and that was the only trip i i did with him and I almost didn't do it because I had such a good year with Forum. Forum and those guys were like, nah, you know, you don't, you don't need to go. I was pretty much tapped on my travel budget. So I, I fronted all the costs, which was expensive. And then, uh, you know, we sat for the first two weeks thinking it was going to be a wash. And then it just, this, the following two weeks, it turned on and it was amazing. Plus, you know, it's like, I'm like, man, who cares? Like, when do I get an experience like this to go out? to a remote lodge with Travis Rice into like some of the sickest terrain and, and explore this region that really hasn't been tapped. And, uh, yeah. So I was like, I was all in. It, and I mean, the conditions were good and not only did you, the photo, the photo side of that, like I was going to say, not only did the video stuff come together, but the photo, like that tr cover you had of the Crail, 
Oh, I think man. that crail is the most calculated, best straight air that's ever been done in snowboarding. Oh, the crail dude. that you do into that pocket. Sometimes I've watched that a million clicks. times with yeah, people, yeah. and we watch it over and over and go, how <laughs> would you figure out the speed? <laughs> man, well, I wish they would have they would have showed the whole line, because there's a, a pretty good line into it. And then that thing was in the middle, and I was like, I think I got this. And in the heli, you're, it's always like, you don't have much time to decide. You're snapping photos, like you're you're uh trying to just make quick decisions and really you gotta go with your gut and you're like all right yeah let's do this and uh but sometimes uh yeah that one was perfect you went with your gut and that was the most amazing crail ever <laughs> thanks man oh, dude. you must have landed it, in that pocket and been like oh, I was that, so was, that must have been bigger than what you thought i was, it was so be. stoked <laughs> i knew it was gonna once. be big but really the the takeoff was just so perfect it was like the perfect i mean we we hit a bunch of stuff like that and um you know like that that also the landing was just you don't when you find a feature like that that is accommodating to the size of the air like that landing was perfect it was touchdown touchdown yeah yeah you yeah but it's not touchdown because it's a basketball landing where it looked like it was steep at the top and then it looks like it gets (laughs) flat quick and you landed where it was touchdown. But if you would have went five feet yeah. bigger, I don't know. Or if you would have went five feet smaller, you would have been at the top and you might have... Comp- like, you... Yeah, I that did, was some I science that wizardry. <laughs> Dude, way to go. Ugh. That was amazing. <laughs> Thanks. I, what did, about I the, didn't uh, have a touchdown landing on Monday. <laughs> no, you, on Monday you took a little bit of a spill. That's where I bumped into you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. what happened there? Oh, you know, just just getting too frisky out there. Just, you got excited. You know, we were so up excited. Rutherford first day out, right out of the gates. BC, I'm like so psyched to be here, and uh, yeah, that's hit a, a sweet little thing, um, kind of like a natty little wind cup over some rocks into this nice pocket that marginal snow. Hit it one time, went a little too big. Most of the landing, the storm slab slid off, so it was pretty hard underneath. And, uh, and then I went a little too slow, like probably like 0.8 kilometers too slow. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll go with, yeah. Point Roughly. Eight. Yeah. And, uh, just barely tapped that thing on my tail and then went into, you know, pitched me forward, going nose heavy into a hard landing. A double score. Twisted scorp. up, double score. Yeah. <laughs> Not so nice. <laughs> so you think I, after all these years, I'm smarter than that. You got excited, dude, and you went to bang off a quick clip. If you would have landed it, it would have been one of those things like, yeah, the snow wasn't bad, but it made sense. But like, been a nice one. There's a reason why you're such a boss, because you've, you've paid the, your dues, you know what I mean? And then yeah. you accidentally paid your dues on maybe something that you should have like maybe not paid any <laughs> yeah. dues on. But <laughs> Oh, dude, I know. That's you're always I'm learning, saying, though, dude. dude. When, I was, when I was younger, I used to be more sensitive about the snow. Now my standards have gone down. I'm like, yeah, we'll, I'll jump into that. That looks, that's fine. I don't know. You you get away with a lot, and yeah, really. It I I think I just like am less. Um, I'm I'm le- I think more confidently. I'm less concerned about like, um, you know. Really, I'm kind of like it's all gonna be fine. Yeah. Even if you know I want to do this, I'll take the responsibility. Even if I like. Well, the thing is, when you've done as much as you've done over the years, there's so many like micro small adjustments that you, because of riding all the natural terrain that you've been riding over the years, can make last second. Whether it's like, oh, I'm losing my speed on this, like this toe edge, I'll just pop on like just things that no one else can comprehend unless you ride as much natural terrain as you do. Where for you, it's not that scary because you have years and years and years of experience where I know how to get out of this. I know how to escape this. So your confidence can always goes up where I think you even said this in one of your interviews that like somebody trying a front 360 in the park is just as gnarly as you trying like a line to natty back seven over some rocks just because of people's ability you know what I mean and your ability is getting more and more into like the I can accomplish whatever I think I can do because I know how I'm going to get on my feet I know how I'm going to escape this in case this slough goes I know how I know my route Totally. And you're like, I'm going to be okay because if I screw up this natty back seven, it's worst case, it's going to turn into a natty back five and I'll switch wheelie and I'll be fine. Where <laughs> other people, it's just not the same outcome. 
Yeah, I mean, you really learn how to read terrain. I feel like year after year, like my eye has uh, evolved the most out of everything. You just, you just like you see things that maybe not everybody would, or or like you just kind of like know how to interpret terrain cool, which is awesome. You know, I I like that evolution. That's where my it's kind of like that's where I'm, I'm at the beginner phase of that straight up and it's it's so exciting it's like a full new yeah. chapter of life you know what i mean where dude, you go in the back country in our stage dude you're no, crushing it no dude, dude, back country jody it's like off it, the streets in the it's a little flower right now and i'm about to develop i'm gonna blossom oh bro i it's just it's tough though because i have a, like when i go out there and a lot of the times i'm out there i'm with your younger brother who's also incredible at riding natural stuff he, him and Chris and Rusty and Matt and whoever else and Bo, whoever else I'm out there with, they give me a lot of confidence because I ask them a lot of questions. You know, I'm not afraid to be the young buck that's like, okay, like if I heel side turn here, Eric will be like, whoa, if you do the heel side turn, you got to do it really slow or you're going to white room yourself and you're going to go blind off that cliff. And it's just things that you don't think about <laughs> when you grew up in Winnipeg and you were riding park and rails for the last ever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've been riding backcountry a lot, but I built a lot of cheese wedge jumps and like pat down step downs but when you go fully natty you got to think about slough oh, and man, like white best, rooming dude. yourself Back and country it's joe is killing it that butter into that cliff had to had to compensate with the upper body to not go over front side one on the yeah like, you gotta you gotta <sighs> not yeah thanks john dude. oh man yeah, yeah he jacks my... on his way up here too. yeah he is He's savage. bringing a bunch of snooze up for the boys nice yeah because i forgot it no no no, no worries no stress yeah, yeah. That stuff's it's full of tobacco. It's not good for you anyway. So I mean it's probably best that we stay off that. Yep, I don't do it. Stay off it. So who are some guys these days that have your eyes? Like who's coming out with footage right now that you're excited? Obviously you said Travis. Is there anybody that's like, you know, else that's like, damn, that dude's snowboarding and makes me wanna damn. like ride different or like that guy's inspiring me? Yeah, I mean, oh they're like it's really exciting these days, like all the uh all the air awareness I'm, I'm not talking about like the the massive spins i'm talking about more of like the shifties and like haldor style like i love what haldor is doing and putting out um that dude is is one of my faves same with arthur longo oh yeah just like such a magician air awareness just, to tranny finder just like yeah he's a he's a scientist he's so good um yeah i've done a few days with <clears throat> both of those guys and Wizards. Yeah, uh, who else? Sage. Sage, Sage is a maniac right I now. I love, dude. I love like, that Sage went from filming like that Lick the Cat movie that was like basically a year off for their, all the friends to party and have fun. I mean, the footage was good, but I mean that video for it was nice for Joy to come out this year and those guys all to like film yeah. a legit as like a 2020 backcountry video. Like those guys like put it on. I was dude, like the trickery in that is next level. Yeah. yeah. I voted for Sage. I bet he gets right of the year. He I did. I know. Oh, did he? He did last night. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, Sage. You well deserved. That is awesome. Yeah. That movie was amazing. Red Gerard has a back good. seven tail in that movie. And it's one of my favorite back sevens ever done. It's like, Back seven, pop, grabs tail and lines, bolts, FT, and it's just like he doesn't compress too much, but he went super deep. Those little small guys, they're so ninja, you know, the yeah. light guys like Nicholas and stuff, they just, they don't put a lot of pressure on the snow. And it's like, <laughs> I know, man. Uh, I know. They're so good. Dude, speaking of snow, look how hard it's snowing. It is puking right now. Tomorrow's going to be good. We need it to be. We need it to snow over 12 centimeters so that when we go back, drop, we're okay, you know? <laughs> I know, dude. Oh, my God. What do you want to film here? You want to get after some technical line riding or you just want to get out? You want to test your freestyle ability? You want to go double back 10 tail grab or dude, what? Dude, everything. I would love to go dub back 10 tail. Didn't you do that in the fucking movie, double yeah. back 10 tail? Yeah, I was trying it last year, too, and I was just having a few problems coming around on my heels a little bit too much and then after watching it so many times i was like oh dude it's because when i'm coming around i'm like opening this left arm instead of you know when you grab mute on on a double cork you're like your shoulders it goes still, down yeah still in that spot where it brings your body around and centers if you open this this you know you're gonna kind of like go to your heels i tried to back 10 last year caught my heel edge and landed on my head Dude, I've seen you do back, 
double tens. No, never done a back double ten. Really? No. 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 Never. Sorry. Sorry to let you down. I'll try one this year though. But it's gonna be with mute and it's gonna Did look too front double tens. I've done a bunch of front double tens and I've never landed one. I've landed one in the park like years ago, but oh, I've never gnarly. filmed one. No, I've tried one once with Torstein and Rasmin on a gap up Rutherford. I've tried I try one every year. And it's normally on the biggest jump we hit, and then what I just... What happens? I'd land on my feet, and then just don't land it. On the front side or the back front side? side? I come around to my feet every year and stomp, and then just, you know, take a rag doll. But it's like one of those things where if it... I think maybe, it can come maybe together. It's, maybe, maybe it's your board setup. Yeah, I think it's yeah. the board setup. I didn't measure my stance enough, and I detune yeah. my edges. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, there, I have a lot of excuses, but I'll, I'll put one down for you this year. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've been riding the park a lot, and instead, like for me, when I watch all my favorite videos, the 1080s for me personally are never my favorite tricks in the movie. You know, you have a switchback five in the fuck it form movie with like this really big condom hat, and it's really close Kinda to like a rock, one. and you like switch back five, <laughs> and it's like the strongest legs ever, like. That clip resonates with me. Or like, I watched Mark Frank's part the other day, Back in Black, and he just has a huge uh, back shifty. He also has like this Ooh, half yeah. cab, and he turns into it a back shifty. Yeah, he's. I think I want to get a little bit more on my like under five forty game, but those Same. clips be like really strong, like a good front one eighty, but not I was switch just gonna say. switch on your heels out like bolts front one eighty. Like front one eighties are the sickest. Yeah, They're so it's hard. Tough. Yeah. It's t- it's tough to film one that you're like. I feel like a lot of people film them, and when they do, everyone's like, yo, that front 180 was sick because it was a front 180, but it wasn't bolts. It wasn't as big as the back one that they filmed. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be sick to film a front 180 that was like a standout, like a clip that was like one of your top three clips in the part. Like, the front 180, dude, was crazy. Dude, you know what? I, I've actually been thinking about um, doing front side spins more. Like, I think you just posted something uh, to ride in the park, that front 360 with the slaw. The, oh, dude. Yeah. So juicy. Yeah, the, I've yeah. watched uh, TB2 the other day, I think. And a lot of people were doing like slob grabs. Mm-hmm. And then, and I've been doing the slob for a while, but I, I want to do that with the, the cab three, you mm-hmm. know, and then grab mute there. Yeah. But like do a front seven. Gigi had one, and you're filming with Gigi right now. Yeah, who is your yeah. crew that you're out here with right now? You're out Dude, here with. We got we got Gigi Ruff. We got Victor Daviet. Who's sitting on the so couch dumb. behind us? Come on, can, let's get a little French accent. Are you still doing your performances? <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I was not stoked on my performances on Monday. Yeah, so you're out here but with the Pirates crew. Yeah, man, we got a great crew. And uh, that's, awesome. that's that's awesome. That's kind of a new, yeah. fresh crew for you. Have you filmed with uh, Victor or uh, with Gigi before? Uh, last year, yeah. We're doing a two-year project, so awesome. we were getting after it. Uh, last year, the only difference is last year we had snowshoes. This year, we got sleds. Yeah, I know. So it should be interesting. <laughs> Are they bummed on the sleds? or? You know, I, it's going pretty good so far. I don't nice. think anybody got stuck on Monday. Oh, that's um, awesome. Now that we got fresh snow, it's going to be And like you got the eight fitties, dude? It's not like, what was your first sled? My first sled, well, I mean, standard, standard films. Mike Hatchet hooked me up with an Indy 700 to ride. What year? It wasn't my sled. Ah, uh, shoot. What year was that? That was probably like a freaking, uh, I don't know, maybe like a 98 or something like that. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I crashed it a couple times, put it, put it into like, went off a cornice unexpectedly into like a frozen lake. You know, I, I paid my dues. I did. Oh, I had my gosh. rookie and, fuck And that ups. wasn't your sled. That was hatchet sled. Yeah. Yeah. Were you really stressed out when you oh, damaged the sled? Yeah, man. Did it make you feel and, shitty in your sled helmet? Of course, dude. dude I was like, I did the I'm same so thing, sorry. dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm the I, last... I rolled it one time off the trail into a tree <laughs> that you couldn't get out where it was like super steep you know into this gully and we had to you know dig a whole trail pretty much ruined our whole morning because you know we're dealing with my mess my mistake <laughs> like <laughs> sorry oh, guys man. yeah but you know i gotta give a shout out to those guys those like thank you so much taking me under the wing like that it's really cool to you know have mentors in the game and for them to actually take you under your their wing is that's like that's fortunate. all snowboarding 
yeah, I'm like super grateful to a lot of people. They've, they've all helped me in a way. And I've mentioned this on the podcast, um, previous, I believe with Mark that Devin borrowed me a sled for the first time. And I went out to Braylorn with me and Jeeves and my other buddy, Kevin Griffin. Sick. And I, <laughs> I drove Devin's sled straight into a tree <laughs> oh, in a flat, like a flat lake. Oh, with, no. with trees and I just couldn't avoid the tree like it wasn't like I was side hilling going up a hill it was like a lake <laughs> like and I just got it. slowly <laughs> driven like sucked into a tree and drove straight into it and then cried in my helmet <laughs> and I was like oh my god Devin Walsh is gonna hate me forever oh. and then I returned it and my epic team manager Nick Olson was just like Ah, we'll pay for it, dude. No worries. I was like, oh, fuck. Why did I cry like a total loser? Dude, I know back then <laughs> money was just coming out every orifice uh, yeah. of every company. What was your biggest paycheck you've ever gotten paid by someone? Dude, I don't. Who's I, a random I, company that you can dish out a paycheck number from? Like, is there like a random company that was just paying you a lot of loot back in the day? I mean. Because people no. want the numbers, man. <laughs> Dude, so does the Border Patrol. When I was coming up there, they're like, so wait, you get paid to snowboard? I'm like, well, yeah, you know, it's, it's like, you, you negotiate contracts. They're like, well, do they pay you for this production? I'm like, no, you don't get paid from the production. You get paid from the companies that you endorse. And they're like, well, how much do you get paid? I'm like, ah. Like peanuts. I don't, n- not, not like it used to. Like, not, <laughs> Downplay I it. I don't really get paid that much. And they're like, well what's your best year ever? I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> what like, is it? I, I, dude, oh, you can't say, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not that good, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Um, but yeah, way to go. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, I respect that. I, yeah. I just got to ask cause I had Roman on the podcast yeah. and he was, he's not like, you know, doing it full time anymore. And so he was dishing out some numbers and your brother dished out. Was he making he was, bank? Well, yeah, he was, well, not like, well, I thought it was crazy. I think he said it was twenty or twenty-five a month from Burton, for and then plus, oh, dude, I'm sure, and then plus all of his his Falcom and everyone else he was riding for. So it was probably closer to you know thirty-five, thirty-six. I think he said, and then he signed that for three years in a row, which is fucking <laughs> juicy. Yeah, which is what's that a year? Thirty-five. I don't know. I think he was up in the four hundreds, probably. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, which like when he was filming Vivid and stuff like that, you're kind of like. You know, when he was like the full rock star, dude. <laughs> like that, those video parts were crazy. Dude, on Inc. <laughs> we're actually renting his truck right now, his truck and two sleds. Nice. What? He's yeah, not coming it's like up. A brand new 350. Oof, beauty. How much you paying for that sucker? Victor? 8,500. 8,500. Is that Canadian or Euros? One truck, two sleds. Thanks, Roman. One truck, two, two sleds. <laughs> Thanks, Roman. Roman, you're, the you're best. man. Yes. You G. All right, it's a nice truck. So, what else? We no, got? you go, man. Oh, come on, what you I, ask dude. me something. What's up, let's, <laughs> let's. Okay. So, was it was it your idea or was it Noobs' idea to do a podcast with you? No, to steal my name. To steal your name? Airtime is Airtime your name? <laughs> no, I, but Noobs and I did a did a webisode called Airtime. Oh my god! Did a, did a web series. I'm not even gonna lie. Oh. I got this name for my buddy. I'm gonna. It's announced here, so I, I'm guilt free for the rest of my life. I called my buddy Jake Kuzik, and I was like talking on the phone with him about some names. Mm-hmm. And I I think I had printed down. Um, airtime somewhere but i didn't think of the name i just sent him like a logo and then he was like you mm. should space it and call it airtime because it's like a play on words because you're on air but it's sure, you know sure. and then um yeah, noobs and i talked about that same thing yeah, yeah i know it, you've been hanging with noobs for a while okay like, whatever <laughs> maybe i stole it from you you know what i bit you you know no, I, dude, you don't know I, this but when i was a kid dude when your white balance came part came up um, we didn't have Planet Earth, a dealer in in Winnipeg, so I went and bought. Change some... the subject. Pardon me. I'm just trying to change the subject. Yeah. Okay. I stole the name from you. Whatever, <laughs> dude. Get over it, dude. You're an epic. You're dude. At one point, you got to realize that you've done everything, and people are gonna copy you, man. I also try to do switchback fives. Okay, wait. Like you, so Can, whatever. Could, I'm just kidding. I really don't give a fuck. I lo- I love the name. I'm glad somebody is using it. Like <laughs> Thank noob, you. noobs and I did that little thing, and which was just like. It's filming our silly adventures in like 2012 or something. Yeah, I remember. I, 
Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but what are? It's a great name, though. It's dude. a good name. I, I love it. I love it. So wait, what the Planet Earth thing? So oh yeah, so the Planet Earth thing. Your part in White Balance came out. You had that sweet song, "She's a Study," um, mm. and then that part came out. So I went around all the dealers and I was like, "Yo, I really like John Jay and White Balance. Yo, that guy's got some six D." No, my way. name's Jody. I'm here to buy. You know, I want the khaki pants and I want the green jacket that he's wearing. Nobody was carrying it, so I bought some khaki four square pants instead because I was still pretty obviously four square was tight as shit back then. So I bought some four square pants, and then the closest thing because I was Canadian was a West Beach jacket. So I bought a green West Beach jacket. My buddy had a fur coat that was detachable, and I stole stole the fur from him. He gave it to me because he knew how big of a fan I was, and I stapled it to my green jacket so I could have the combo. Yeah, dude, my man. Yeah. You never, you never yeah. told me anything. I got like photos that, of it too, dude. I got like the John Jay kit, dude. I was like, a full, and I had the grenade gloves because I think you're still in grenade at the time. I was also obsessed with Danny, so I was just biting, dude. I was a big John Jay fan, dude. dude. That's an it's, honor, it's the, man. that's real that's talk. Rad. I did, see. That I was never... one of the top parts for us, and which is crazy because you didn't have like a ton of rails, but you know you had probably like a good handful of them. The four fifty, the two sev switch up combo on the bot on the down flat box that you and Matt Hammer probably sesh together. Oh yeah, and there was an old four fifty in there. I yeah, it, was it? There? It was a four fifty. It might have been a two sev and then four fifty. I don't remember. Yeah, on that was like some rail in Europe. I think what what was that? The the summer camp they used to do. Oh, freaking! Well, I wouldn't know. Um, that it just looked epic. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. I've, I've been a butter for you uh, since day one. Thanks for the name, John. And noobs. Yeah. Well, whatever, bro. <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. I love that guy. Well, so we, when you first some, heard this podcast, we were, were you like, motherfucker? <laughs> no, dude. I was like, I was like, oh, airtime, man. Well, get there that goes. Yeah, I Can't. know, right? Stealing little can't thief. be using it, but we're done with airtime anyways. Somebody, like I said, somebody should use it. I'm using we, it. Right. We had, yeah, it's you know, you're gonna get a letter from my attorney. <laughs> <laughs> when was your first time coming to Whistler? You're a little mammoth kid. When did you come up here to try and ride the epic backcountry up here? Dude, you know, I don't know. instead it's of the long. bony stuff that you guys have down there and those old video parts, like, dude, you guys were there's rock exposure everywhere. Down in Tahoe? Well, yeah, dude. It looks, bo- looks boneville. It used to be awesome. Well, I mean, yeah, the, the, the sliver landings we, you guys are going into, but when I watch old Devon parts, I'm like, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that looks no, like a nice pow field. It's definitely vast up here. And, uh, yeah, man, I have always loved it up, up here. I, I was, uh, I had trouble getting in for a while, like 10 years. I've got eight TRPs. Coming in here, temporary residence. Oh, permit. nice. Temporary, what is it? I don't know, dude. Yeah. I've never temporary heard residence of residence permits. You got to get that if you if you have a DUI. Stupid. Had a DUI when I was young. Really, like, messed up my travel plans to Canada. <laughs> well, you done did it because you've been traveling. Yeah, so you figured it in. out. I mean, the years that I couldn't get a TRP, I had this sweet little kayak route. And I just, like, kayak over. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we can just bleep um no that's yeah. dope dude i'm glad you were good at kayaking and you, and you made it up here because those parts yeah. were epic fucking cold sometimes so was uh what was your favorite part of snowboarding did you like the middle of it like obviously you right now is your favorite because you redeveloped you're excited to keep snowboarding but was the forum phase your favorite you know good travel budget solid crew always had a solid video to film for like do you like that era or were you the standard kind of years? Like, you know, when you were up and coming, you know, the standard years were awesome, but I feel like in that infancy of a career, you're, you're, you're a little more nervous. You're a little more scared. I can remember like being scared going out in the morning to the back country. I'd be like, uh, like that was me maybe four I years should, ago. Maybe I should like be going to school or doing something else. <laughs> and uh, and now I like there is none of that. I love it. I absolutely love it. So definitely like I've, these days are the best. Forum days were absolutely glorious. Like just such a fun crew, um, such an opportunistic time where we could do whatever we wanted and had these big tours and like you know it was. Uh, 
Yeah, it seemed it pretty awesome. budget friendly. It, very, very, very budget friendly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and and uh, man, we were also getting incredible winters. Like, like I feel like that's changed a little bit as far as. Um, you know, the consistency of the snow and the snowpack, like we definitely see a difference um, a on how many good days you get out there. It's it's harder to get like a really fierce part because, you know, a lot of times you just don't, you go on trips and you, you get skunked or you only get a few good days or it's kind of subpar. But um, yeah, I, I just like some of those years, you know, some of those video parts that were so good, part of the reason was because the winter was so good we i just mean had honestly time. there's not a lot of dudes who've been riding the snow for as long as you guys at a level that you guys have been riding and i'm saying you guys like the people who are still like you and gigi and renzi and people who've been doing it for a long time but whenever i talk to any of you guys who've been doing it for that long mikey's like it wasn't like this back in the day like it, uh, it, it used to snow pillows were good for a, like a long time you'd have a big window to ride pillows and then it would snow, and then it would be blue in the alpine, and it would be deep, and you could just get after it. Yeah. But, like, now, dude, like, we haven't, like, the window that's about to come up is going to be our best window, and we're sitting in February right now. And all of December and January were, like, insane avvies, crazy wind. Then it would snow a bunch, but then the next day it would get hot. It was, like, nobody knew what was going on. I know, man. The, the earth is emotional right now. Dude. It's an emotional it's, it's, it's emotional. It's swinging all over the place. We got Garbage Island sitting in the middle just pissing off everything. Oh, man. <laughs> then we got this lunatic down in America leading the pack. <laughs> like, <laughs> leading the pack. <laughs> right off a cliff. <laughs> Jeez, I know. Like, wake up, people. Yeah. Dude, if we're so screwed if he goes a second term. I just can't believe... I'm not even going to bring up politics. I don't politics. want to go... Yeah. We yeah, won't yeah. bring up politics in the sense that my only point that I'm going to try to get across, because I don't need to get it across because everybody will agree with me, even if you are pro whatever. How are you so well... Un, like, he cannot deliver a, like, heartfelt, empathetic speech to address the nation in a way that sounds, like, professional when, like... That's insane to me that if you are the face of a country that you can't be well-spoken. Like yeah. he's the most, like, you have to be well-spoken if you are a leader. And I can't believe that people are, whatever. That's my yeah. thing. That's my two cents with him is this like, regardless of what he's doing with his power and stuff is like, he's the most, I don't know, so unwell-spoken. It's crazy. Yeah. It's even if your, your form is tough. I just can't like you. His values are pretty obvious, and you're just like, oh, man, that's... that's not our values. That's not... I don't agree. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a lot of people in the community do. But, I mean, like, whatever. Even if, even if you do, I would love to have a conversation with you to see what, what your viewpoint is, because I am a mature adult who's down to hear people out. You know, that's another good thing, is if somebody doesn't have the same viewpoint as you, instead of just saying, I hate you, I don't want to talk to you, it's like, let's talk about this. Let's hash it out. Let's have a good conversation. You bring up your points, I bring up my points, and then, you know, hopefully you guys both come up with it with uh, being on the, you know, our side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. man. It's all about communication, brother. Communication's key. And, you know, everybody's got a different opinion. Should, should you know, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. You got you to gotta honor other, other opinions. and Exactly. You know, like, and we've and traveled to, the to world. To a certain degree. Um, well, you traveled the world a lot more than I have. I'm sure of it. And when you see all the different cultures from around the whole world, you kind of get a gist that everybody's on the same team. You know, everyone cares about their family. Everybody just wants to live a healthy life where their daughter and their uncle can hang out with each other. It's pretty much the same thing everywhere you go. And you almost wonder if the governments are just getting in the way of all the people's happiness, man. Man, I, I'm like, I, I could just go up live in AK and have, have where is john gonna go land. what's you know, the future I was actually for you just looking at the map around here and like there's so much unexplored terrain oh uh, yeah i got a lot i got like, buddies in pemberton up there that go out they drive down this road past the hurley and it's the longest dr like road ever and they drive down with extra fuel tanks and then it just stops and then they <laughs> go on their dirt bikes and they dirt bike out as far as they can and those they stop and then they go camp out as far Dude. as they can walk and then they take pictures of bears that's awesome oh yeah so wait you guys like this is your residence you it this is one of the best places in the world to snowboard if you're hunting powder 
and uh, you guys have been doing it for a long time. The Man Boys crew is like an established weapon up here. Um, but how often are you guys going and exploring new zones you've never been to around here? It seems like we really have endless. It has, it is endless, and I don't think that until about three years ago, I'd say Rusty really started. He was going up on the shitty days, exploring new zones. And then right around that time, Rasmin got comfortable enough to go out with Rusty and they would kind of go and do some new zones. And then Soller started doing it a lot, like with Mikey and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They would be like, re- but we kind of, until like two years ago, we were kind of in this like, okay, we still need to be productive or we're going to lose our jobs if we don't get any clips and we try to punch up all these new zones and we don't get anything. And we get like, and yeah, we tried yeah, sure. to do that this year. We tried to go up a full new zone. And we spent all day breaking trail and cutting trees down and like trying to make it up. And we got like a third or a quarter of the way. (laughs) And then it started like we were soaking wet and stuck. And then the next day it snows and we're like, okay, we have a two hour window tomorrow. That's supposed to be sunny. Do we go back up and try to like continue to break into the zone? So I think we're going to eventually do that and hopefully explore some new terrain. But for me, I haven't explored all the terrain here. So it's always kind of new for me. But the guys like Rusty, who've been doing it for substantially long, and Matt, uh, yeah, maybe that maybe they could be uh, leaders in um, explore exploring zones. Dude, I want to go with you. Can I go? Can I yeah, go? you can, can come for sure. We need gotta, we need another I exploring. Gotta, I, I think we need like up. a crew of explorers. So it's like we have like ten of us, and then you know while the three guys are stuck and they're building the bridge, the other guys can continue to go ahead. We could kind of be yeah, like a little uh, like military styles, you know what I mean? So but then the, you don't get slowed down. I'm, and maybe we don't need to go this far, but I was like, I mean, I'm just geeking out on like the whole range going north, like all the way. Like I was looking at some stuff around Bella Coola and south of that, like there's some little. Oh, you little know, there's some nice waterfalls where up there. You're like, oh my God, there's got to be some juice in here. Oh yeah. And there's probably some zones that nobody's ever been to. That are yeah, which it, the so most exciting. perfect zone in the world. You know that's what I mean? That's what I mean. That's like what I. That's it's like, that's and what, we could call it like God's playground. That's as good as landing like the perfect trick that you've been wanting to land forever. You're, whether it's your back ten or your perfect front side. Finding a new perfect zone. Back. Yeah, it is. We have a new, We do have a new zone. We do have a new one. But oh. I mean, yeah, you'd have to pay me to come to it, <laughs> oh, dude. I'm gonna. Hide we found a, little, a new one. Hide a little beacon on you. We we found a new one, and it's uh it's not very good. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> <laughs> we won't be going back. Uh, it's called the Swamp Monster. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Uh, we got some exploring to do. Oh man, it's so fun. Yeah, so yeah, I got the machine for exploring. You got a new one. Did you see it? Yeah, I did. The yellow. Yeah. You got it's kind of ugly. What, what year did you get it? Truck looks like a. Skittle. It's a twenty twenty. Yeah. It's turboed? You turboed it? It's come stock turbo. Oh my lordy. Leyland turboed his sled a few years ago. And yeah. I think, it, and then he kept blowing his belts or something. And his crew was like, dude, Leyland, you got to really? start blowing your belts. I turboed my sled too a long time ago and I blew the whole thing up. Damn it. <laughs> but now it's got a warranty. And like, you know, they've been working on this thing for a while. So yeah, dude, I'm. That's going to be jo- Johnny Turbo. You can, you know, that will. That name's already taken, so you yeah. could probably have like Airtime Turbo because you're the rightful owner no, no, no. of the I, name of my pod. Do, do I have to give you something air, if I make moved on? No. Okay. Look, you're giving me because I make like you're giving you know. me airtime. Okay, perfect. It's a fair Turn trade on off. the air, and a CBD water. It's delicious. So, what's the future for John? What do you What do you plan for the future? Do you plan for the future? Okay, or? wait. Yeah, dude, for sure. I mean, I got so many ideas burning through my skull. What are they? Um, can I have them? Is Jax jewelry still going? Jax is still going, man. Jax is dude. It, it's, shout out it's Jax. Uh, ja- <laughs> so you guys need some jewelry? Hit up John Jay. He's got a, his own uh, Jax jewelry. Union. Jax you jewelry. Know, and uh, I have like a lot of stuff in the works for it. It's been a little slow, um, um, but it's it's a uh, it's a fun project that I'm going to keep doing. And it's I, have, I like uh, it. You got your hands in a few so things. Do you have? Do you own any restaurants? Do you do anything else like that? Jack or and I have, have been doing a restaurant for a while that we're trying to sell right now, actually. And then uh, burrito place? No, it was like a. Um, it was called Restaurant Eleven O Seven, like kind of a, um, like American cuisine, some Cajun influence. My dad was the man behind um, the operation. 
Nice. He's um, over it. Burnt. He's over it. He's super over it. We're all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so if you want to buy a restaurant, anyways, hit up John. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just don't ask to look at our books. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've heard that before. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, there's, it's a beautiful space. You could turn it into condos, yada, yada. But yeah, you know, real estate's fun, whatever. Do you, have, do you own a house anywhere? Yeah. Where do you, yep, where's yep, your house? Yep. My residence is, uh, pretty much Reno, man. It's outside, west of Reno, between Reno and Truckee. Nice. Little town called Verde. I know. I've seen you there before. My shitty it's mechanic nice. just working on uh, the, yeah, the yeah, rig yeah. and yeah. stuff like My that. My shitty mechanic, you know, is always wrenching on something. <laughs> I, 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 he's trying to get, I, I read just a little bit ago, my truck was overheating. I had to get to, to get to tip him out and clean all the wires it seems out there. Like I had so. a low voltage problem. Wasn't sure what was going on with it, but uh, I'm, I'm also, something is happening. I keep blowing the tail light and popping the fuel, so I'll pop it open and uh, make sure it don't get pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> Seems to me like every once in a while your shitty mechanic doesn't. It, you do figure it out sometimes, and sometimes oh, it's yeah. inevitable. Like it's shit, I gotta take it to him. Sometimes mechanic. it's not worth it, and it takes so long. Sometimes, but you know what? It's cool because you always you always learn something, and and most of the time you can figure it out. It's not that hard. Um, but like, yeah. So you can change your oil, is what you're saying on your truck. Yeah, I've learned how to do that. Yeah. Nice. Still, what about still can't do can it do without brakes? spilling. <laughs> can you? Do yeah, brakes? yeah, I can do brakes. Nice. I actually got to do my e-brake in my truck out there. Oh, there you go. That's a little bit more technical. It's actually pretty easy. Have you ever done? Have you ever redone your rad? The rad? <laughs> no, I don't even know what Me that neither. is. <laughs> <laughs> Is All that right, like one talk. of those like, hey, can you pass me the schlussingen over there? What do you want? The schlussingen. The snooze? No, I thought you were waiting on snooze. The schlussingen. I don't even know what that means, man. That's what I'm doing to you. Oh, <laughs> That's what you just did to me, you know? <laughs> oh, the rad. The schlussingen. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. I don't know. About, you can tell. I don't know a lot about vehicles. That's what I'm getting at right now. Every vehicle's got a schlussingen. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. Whatever the schnoozkin is, that seems like my truck right now. Uh, wait. <laughs> um, but, yeah. You know what? Business goals are cool. Whatever. You got any? Take over the world. But I, yeah, what about, like, just personal, personal goal, like, like, life goals, spiritual goals? Sometimes I feel like there's, you get so wrapped up in your tasks and your projects and your daily routine that... You kind of start missing the plot of just general life and beauty and like what kind of we're here for, which I don't know, but just like, just like the resonance of being in mother nature. And that's, you know, one of my favorite things about snowboarding, but, um, I, I always thought it'd be so cool to like live for a while without a clock or a calendar. And basically you just get like in tune to the frequencies of, what's going on around you, you know, how the temperature changes, how the stars move, how the plants bloom and, and every, just like the natural growth of things, you know, more, 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 more primitive living, dude. I, I like, that's kind of, uh, where like my head's at a little bit and, and having, I don't know, traveling. That's kind of like why well, I went to Mexico for a while solo just to kind of like get into that like just just beauty and appreciation and kind of like reset yeah it slows you down it's that de- it de- it it also like picks you up yeah you know? it gives you a it's, giant dude there's there's a reality check when you go out there in those in those woods and you realize you know like what oh dude wrapping your head around the whole like purpose of this life and stuff like that and you're worried about like Oh man, damn it! I didn't get my front nine indie today, and I didn't get my cab seven. Like, dude, those things don't matter. <laughs> exactly, dude. Yeah. Someone's gonna watch your cab seven while they're on the john, and then you're still gonna be out there and be like, "Well, what was the point of that cab seven? You know, <laughs> if you can work on, oh, dude. Yeah, I know it gets try- deep. We're about to oh, get yeah, like, dude, we're about a, to have a, a heart it, to yeah, heart it's here. A, it's, man. A, it's a can of worms. We and if you, time for this. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, dude well thank you so much for coming on do you have any thanks what's dude. the future for john do you want to give any shout outs who are you riding for these days any plugs yeah man um shout out to man 
shout out to Sims for picking me up. We got a great family Boom. here in the mix. Shout out to all the sponsees. You know, Red Bull, man, has been such a great supporter of mine and uh, like really proactive with projects you pitch to them. So those, I, I, a lot of, a lot of respect to those guys. Um, Jody, thanks for having me on. Everybody You're that welcome. had something to do with my career, man, I'm so blessed. I'm so fortunate to still be doing this. I'm in Whistler. I'm freaking out. BC, man. I love this every time. I'm like a child when I come up here. I just get so excited. Well, everybody who's <laughs> listening to this podcast has, is a John Jay fan in one way or another. You've oh, inspired yeah. years. You've inspired so many different generations of snowboarders, people who have you know stop snowboarding people who've you know are way older now and have four kids you know what i mean to the young kids you've inspired like four generations of snowboarders <laughs> thousands of generations i feel like i'm still, <laughs> so I'm still thank like you i'm still suck stuck in the in the vortex man the I, vortex. I think it's like yeah maybe maybe uh i'm gonna probably cut my hair this year and then maybe things will change you're going to cut your hair and move into the woods and get really, you know, when the flowers are going to blossom with the, you know, the, the, ta- you're going to be like, I can taste the wind. It's about to be winter and you're going to get it wrong. And you know, Dude, the seasons gonna are going to be, be off. So happy. No phone, it's no clock. Be so sick. Oh, oh man. God. Okay. Before we get off of here though, what's, give me some, some of your 2020 goals, man. We're in 2020, start of a new decade. 2020 goals for I want to film a really good video part for nobody else other than me. And yeah. I want it to be, I, I just want certain things to come together because mm. uh, I've, I, you know, I don't want, I want to work really hard at that. So I have something I'm proud of over the year and I'm going to work really hard and I'm going to have that. And then, um, other than a, a sick video part, um, dude, I want this podcast to be tight. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, I want to put some work into it and make that. Your time. Yeah, I just, yeah, dude, I just want it to Swish. be something that like, I don't know, snowboarders can get behind and, you know, give back in a little way. And I don't know. And then be a good uncle, man. Be a good person. I want to be a better, you know, I just want to step it up. You know what I mean? I want to step up this year into like a year of like, it's 2020. It's got such a good ring to it. You know what I mean? 2020. It sounds good to accomplish your go- some goals. And I just want to have like a really, you know, in, include like my health into that. Mm-hmm. I want to be like, you know, prioritize that every once in a while. Um, I, I want to have some a, a little bit more outside with nature. My girl likes to camp, so I want to do a little bit more camping and the stars thing, and hang go, out, dude. go a little bit more north. Rasmund's got a, a cottage with his girlfriend Lucy called Anderson Lake, and when it gets dark there, it's so dark, but the stars come out, and it's like such a magical place up there. I'd like to hang out there a little bit more. You know what I mean? I felt like I went there this summer and I got like a reality check on the whole like purpose of life and like, cause I was really stressing out, you know, I never made like a ton of money in snowboarding and my sister, you know, has accomplished a lot. She's a pharmacist. Her husband's a pilot and you get that whole, like you start looking at your life and comparing it to other people. But you know, if you had their life, you wouldn't, you need to realize that it, well, for me anyway, that I'm the happiest in my life. And if I, I can be happier if I just alter small things. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? There's a few things I need to work on my by my by on like myself. But once I work on those things, it's going to be the dopest self ever. You know what I mean? Or something Heck like that. Yeah, uh, dude. I'm, I'm just excited for the future, man, and being dude. a better person and, and uh, you know, opening my horizons a bit more. You know, the whole like younger 20s, I th- felt like I was closed off a bit. You know, if people didn't do the stuff that you did, you were kind of like oh, you don't board or or you don't ride rails or you you don't like this or not even necessarily snowboarding, but just like in day-to-day thing. But none Mm -hmm. of that matters, you know what I mean? I want to just be a little bit more open. I don't know, something like that. Does that sound good? Maybe maybe I I feel like that's the general idea of my 2020 is a gist of all that mayhem I just said there. Nice. Yeah, it's okay. (laughs) That was beautiful. That was beautiful. All right, John, dude, thank you so much for coming on. Like you said, it's not easy to give somebody the legend uh, card, and um, I'll do it. You're a legend, dude. Thank you so much for all you've done. You're a great human, and keep up uh, the shitty mechanic. I'm excited to see you get out of some pickles. I'm I'm (laughs) most likely going to break down on this journey, so Ah, you'll you'll be all right. I'll see you in the parking lot tomorrow, my man. Thanks again, John. Dude, much love. Thanks for having me on. Take care, everybody.